Hello, Laracon. I hope you're having a, having a great conference. Thanks for coming uh, to my talk about backups. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about best practices about backups. I'm going to show you some software that you can use. And I'll, I'm also going to show off uh, my uh, Laravel backup package that I've made. So I'm uh, Freek van der Herten. I'm a partner and a developer at a company called Spasi. Uh, like many of you, I am uh, active on Twitter. My handle is Fake Merze. And I have my own blog, Merze.be, where I talk about uh, modern PHP development in Laravel. Uh, together with uh, these two awesome guys, I um, organized the PHP Antwerp meetup. So if you're ever in the vicinity of Antwerp and want to give a talk, uh, just, uh, just contact us. We're always looking for speakers. Now, my company, Spasi, has been around since uh, 2003. We create web, sub, web shops, uh, applications, and of course, websites. Our team consists of four developers and one manager, and we specialize in Laravel development. Let me talk a bit about open source software. We use a lot of open source software every day, and most of it is free. We use, for example, Nginx. We use, of course, Laravel, Ubuntu, Elasticsearch. And basically, everything listed in our composer, JSON and package JSON, is free. And for this, we are very grateful. Our company couldn't really exist without this kind of software. And I bet that many of you thank your job due to the fact that open source software exists. So because we are very grateful, we also create a lot of uh, software. Um, we have now. Uh, around 80 packages registered on packages, and they have been downloaded for more over uh, 800,000 800, times now. Now, in creating those packages, there are a lot of benefits to be found. First of all, we learn a lot by, by just creating the code. And we also learn a lot uh, with the feedback we get from the community. So with every PR we get and every issue that is posted on GitHub, we learn something. We're also forced to write uh, documentation and tests, because without good documentation, uh, users uh, probably won't use the package. And uh, in my book, if uh, a package doesn't have tests, it doesn't really exist. Those packages also show the quality of our work. If you um, uh, take a look at uh, the source code of uh, one of our packages, then you can see that we uh, really know our way around PHP and Laravel. And of course, we use those packages on our own projects as well. Now, because we're here at, uh, at Laracon, before I start talking about backups, I want to introduce real quick a few of the popular packages. First off, Laravel permission. Uh, this is a package uh, which uh, you can create uh, roles and permissions and assign that to users. So in this code example, a role is created. It is given a certain permission. You assign the role to the user. And then you can assert if a user can do a certain thing. Uh, so this hooks into Laravel's uh, native uh, uh, gate authorization. So the second one. Uh, is Laravel Analytics, and it can be used to retrieve data from Google Analytics. Imagine you're building a site and you want to show off in the admin section uh, the usage of your site, which pages get most visited. You can use this package to get the data from Analytics, so you can fetch the most visited pages or fetch the visitors and the page views or even the, the top refers. Uh, response Cache is a really cool package can be used to speed up your application immensely. It does that by caching the response. So if a request comes in into your Laravel app, uh, Laravel will process it and will uh, create a response. We will save that response. So when the same request comes in, we're just going to serve up that response. It works a little bit uh, like Varnish, if you've seen uh, Matthias talk uh, yesterday. But um, the benefit of this package is, is that you can configure all the, the rules, when it should cache, when the cache should be flushed, all in the logic of your Laravel application. Now, the downside of this is that uh, PHP still has to start up. So Varnish is probably a lot quicker, but 
Um, that being said, it, this package will make your Laravel app uh, more quicker than without it. Next up, Laravel Media Library. This is personally my favorite package. We use it on every project. It can be used to associate files with, with eloquent models. So imagine you have this news item, and uh, you want to attach an image to that. You can do that, like uh, being shown in the first code example. And then, like being shown in the second code example, you can uh, generate a URL to that. The package can also make uh, variations of an image, so it can uh, make a, a thumbnail of it or, uh, or uh, make a crop of it in another format. And it can also be used to uh, uh, store files on other, other file systems as well. So if you have a big file that you want to assist, associate with, a, with an eloquent model, you can put that file on S3, like being shown in the last code example. Um, another package uh, that we've made is an integration with Fractal. Um, who here knows Fractal? Okay, a few hands. So um, from there, README, it's a transformation layer for complex output. It's basically a layer between uh, your database and your API. It's um, uh, from your eloquent model, the two array and two JSON, but then on speed. Um, this is the API you have to use with, with Fractal. So you uh, have to uh, new up a manager. Then you have to create a new collection and pass uh, some books models in it. Then you have to pass in a books transformer. Then you have to tell the manager we are going to parse some includes uh, to it. And then you have to say to the manager we're going to create data with the resource and we are going to transform that to an array. In my mind, uh, this doesn't this doesn't work. I can't I can't remember this at all. So we made uh, a wrapper around it, Laravel Fractal. So we have this Fractal helper function. We're just going to pass it a collection. We're going to transform it with transformer. We're going to include something, and we're going to uh, make an array out of that. To me, it's a lot of difference between those two uh, APIs. So you can find a list of all the things we've made in our website, and I highly suggest you take a look. Maybe we've made something that you can use on your next project. So those packages, they are not, not free. Uh, they, are, uh, they have a special license called Postcardware. If any of our packages makes it into your production environment, you are required to send us a postcard. This is our address. So I, uh, I want that. Somebody just gave me a postcard right before the start. <laughs> OK, let's talk uh, about backups. The first thing I've got to say about this is that there is really no one size fits all um, for backups. If you're in a small team, you're probably going to do it uh, in another way than in a team with uh, some some uh, dev uh, with some dev ops and with some uh, ops department around. So all I uh, all I'm going to say during this talk is really targeted at a small team with only developers, so with no uh, dev ops uh, experience. Um, at our company, this is how we managed things up until a few years ago. We made relatively small sites, and we used shared hosting to host those sites. And the backups, they were done by the, by the hosting provider itself. We didn't do anything for the backups ourselves. So whenever something went wrong, whenever a database crashed or client accidentally uh, uh, deleted the file, we phoned up our hosting provider, and we hoped that they uh, could, could restore it. Um, but as the years passed by, we, we learned a lot, and we create some bigger applications now. And we learned basic server management to excellent resources like, like Service for Hackers. And we now set up our own digital ocean droplets for uh, most of our projects. And we use Forge and Ansible to, to manage those. So that sounds all good, but there is some uh, horror to it as well. Let me tell you something that happened to me in the beginning of the year. So one fine morning, I got this mail from DigitalOcean. It said, 
Earlier today, our cloud operations team was alerted to some performance issues affecting the physical server that hosts your droplet. Now, a droplet is just DigitalOcean speak for a server. The damage was serious enough that this droplet was lost and not able to be restored. So our server was gone. From the one minute to the next, poof, nothing left. Gone. You can read the full story on, uh, on my blog. Now, I don't want to this digital ocean. This can happen anywhere. So this is a mail sent to uh, a user of, uh, of Rackspace, and he went through the same things that, that we went through a server. His server was just, just gone. So you might think those uh, fancy cloud uh, hosting providers, they have a backup service. I'm just going to turn that on, and uh, then I'm good. But that's not the case. Here is another horror story. It's about someone you might know. He uh, made some popular packages as well. He, um, has, uh, he hosted his, um, uh, his sites, Forge and Envoy, uh, on, on Linode. And in the beginning of this year, there was uh, a big uh, denial of service at Linode. So they were down for a couple of days. So you might think, OK, he's, uh, he's activated the backups just can restore from that, but what did Taylor find out? The backups are stored in the same data center. So when that data center is down, you can't access your backup. So there was nothing he could do but just wait until the service came up for a few minutes to get, to get, his, data, to get his data out. So we can't rely on backups of those cloud service providers. Um, in the case of DigitalOcean, they have this backup service, and it really makes you feel great to click that link. But what you should know is that they only uh, take uh, weekly snapshots. So potentially, a lot of data uh, could get lost. Imagine that your server crashes on a Friday, and your last backup is of a Monday. Uh, you have to tell your client that you've lost the data for an entire week. You will probably lose that client as well. And like I've already said, all the backups are in the same data center. So if the data center is down, backups can be accessed. Now, how can this be solved? It's not that difficult. Just don't put your eggs in one basket. The rely, uh, relying on uh, the backups of the, the hosting provider is good, but just do not solely rely on them. Just do something yourself for backups as well. And there are many options you have to do this. Um, you can do uh, uh, your own thing and write a script. You can use hosted services, or you can use open source software for this. I'm going to uh, take a quick look at all of these options. So the first thing you might do is just do it yourself, a bash script. And the excellent service for hackers.com uh, even provides you with a nice script uh, you can build on. Uh, I've linked to it here. Chris Fidao has made an excellent uh, video of it. It basically will dump the database with a MySQL dump, and then it will upload the dump and the files using uh, the, the Amazon CLI tool to S3. And you can um, use Scrum to frequently uh, uh, run the script automatically. But the downside of this is, is that our that there are no notifications when, when something can go wrong. But it's, it's probably possible to, to add notifications, but you have to have a little bit of system administration knowledge to do that. Next option, automatic.io. Uh, um, that's basically backups as a service. It's not free. Uh, if you uh, have a subscription, then you can uh, access their uh, automatic uh, server agent. And uh, you can install that on every server. And with their easy-to-use interface on their site, you can direct those agents to copy certain uh, directories and databases to their storage. Um, an option that you also have is that you can couple your S3 bucket or your other storage to their uh, service. And then you can uh, let the uh, server agents copy the files over directly to, uh, the, to your own storage, which is nice. But it's not free. They're not using an agent anymore? OK. 
Ah, okay. I'll update the presentation for the next time. Thanks. <laughs> um, so the next option you have is to use open source software. And there's this uh, re really great uh, tool out there called, called Backup PC. It's free. Um, it can be installed onto a control server. And it uh, will SSH into every server that you want to backup. And it will use rsync to copy the files over to, its, to the big disk attached to that uh, control server. Now, what I find really cool about backup service, uh, about backup PC, is that it uh, uses hard links to save disk space. So, if it uh, encounters two times the same file, it will only store that once on disk. But in the file system, you will see that as multiple files. It works a little bit like a, a Mac OS's uh, time machine, if you know that. But some system administration knowledge is required to set all of this, uh, all of this up. It isn't easy if you just know your way around Laravel and PHP. So a time ago, I thought, wouldn't it be great if there was a tool that would be easy to use uh, for, for us developers who don't have access to an, uh, to an ops team? And I created uh, a package called Laravel Backup. So what it can do, it, it can backup files and databases to one or more uh, file systems. It can clean up the old backups. It can also send notifications when something goes wrong. And it can easily be installed into any Laravel application. Now, the package is becoming uh, quite popular. This is a screenshot that I took uh, right before uh, my talk started. It has uh, been downloaded now for over 125,000 times. But that number is not that important. What I find important is the growth, that it's still, uh, still going up. Um, it, let's, let's talk a bit in detail what it uh, does. So I've said that it can backup files and databases, which is pretty good if your package is named Laravel Backup. Um, how it does this? It will uh, use MySQL dump to create a dump file uh, from your database. And using the configuration, you can select certain files that you want to backup. It will put uh, those files and the DB dump in a zip file. And that zip file is being copied over to an external server. And basically, you can use any uh, external file system that you, that you want. Dropbox is no problem. S3 is no, no problem. Um, behind the scenes, Laravel's uh, cloud file system is used, which is powered in its uh, way by, by Fly system. So if there is a Fly system driver for it, we can back up to, uh, to that. So what it also can do is uh, to clean up all backups, because backups use, uh, use a lot of storage. And if you're using something like S3, you are going to pay for every byte you use. Probably uh, you're uh, more interested in some recent backups, but not that much interested in a backup that was taking like, I said, uh, like let's say, five years ago. So we have an artisan task to uh, clean uh, up those, those old backups. It's fully configurable by how it, um, how it will clean up the old backups. One thing that it will never do, no matter how you configure it, is it will never delete the youngest backup. So if you uh, configure it wrongly in some way, it will always keep your last, last backup. And to perform the, the cleanups, it uses the grandfather, father, son rotation scheme. Um, you probably don't know that. I didn't know that it, is, it was called in this way. So let me explain it to you what it, what it does. This is that scheme. So imagine that you have a couple of backups for an amount of years, and you run the cleanup. What will the cleanup procedure do? It will keep every backup for a certain amount of days. After that period, it will only keep daily backups. And you can choose how long that period is. You can say, OK, I want to keep everything for eight days, and then I want to keep daily backups for the, for the next eight days, let's say. And then it goes on to keeping only weekly backups, only monthly backups, and then uh, yearly backups. So that's uh, that scheme. Um, 
What the package can also do is, is monitor the, the health of your backups. So it can detect when uh, there is no backup made in a certain amount of days, because if you haven't backed in like a few months, yeah, that's probably not that good. And it can also detect if there is too much storage being used. So if your little site uses like uh, 50 terabytes on S3, that's probably not so good. Um, the package can send notifications when something bad or good, good happens. So when a backup failed, when that youngest backup is too old or when that backup uses too much, uh, too much storage. Um, the um, package was made uh, before Laravel 5.3 came out, so we have our own notification system in there. And that notification system that can now send notifications via mail, Slack, Telegram, and push over. And, I should all, and, and uh, of course, it can also write things to the log. That notification system is fully configurable, and it's also easy to, to extend. Now, I can talk uh, a lot about it, but maybe it's better if I just, just show it uh, to you. So I'll stop this one. So I have here a Laravel application. Uh, that's uh, fully configured, uh, and I've installed uh, the backup in it. This is this is big enough for you? <laughs> Probably it is. So this is the the configuration file of the package. Um, I've tried to make the the configuration as easy as possible. It's quite a bit of configuration, but it should all be very understandable. So it, there are four main sections. We have a backup key here. We have uh, the cleanup configuration. We have the monitor configuration, and then we have the notifications configuration. Let's take a look at the first one, backup. Backup itself is being split up into two major parts. Uh, source, which governs what are you going to backup, and destination, to where are we going to uh, take the backups. If I took a look at source and go a little bit deeper, then that is split up in files, and databases. So in files, you can set paths that you wish to backup and paths that you wish to exclude from the backup. In databases, then here you can say the, the names of the databases that we, uh, that we need to backup. In the destination part, we have disks here. And those disks, they uh, point to disk you have, disks you have configured in the Laravel's five cloud system. So I have a disk uh, local backups here. If I open up the file systems uh, config, uh, then you can see that I have a disk local backups here, which has a driver local, and it will uh, store the packages in the storage pod up backups. So, wait. Nice. Let's run a backup. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is that we have here the Laravel application. And we see that with the backup package installed, we have a few extra commands here. So the first one that I'm going to show here is backup list, which shows you a list of all backups. So you can see here we have an application called My Site. Uh, the backup should be on the disk lo uh, local backups. It is reachable. Uh, that's not that important for local backups, but for S3, it's, it will test from, is this a valid, is this a valid connection? Um, health, healthy, it's not healthy because we have uh, uh, zero backups now, which isn't that good. There are no backups and there's uh, no use storage. So let's create one backup by, create, by running backup run. And you can see here that the first thing that he does is backup the database. And then it will um, determine the files that uh, need to be backed up. It will zip those together with the dump. And it will copy it over to a, a disk named local backups. So if I run backup list now, you can see that we have one backup and our backup is healthy. And I'll let you see here in my app backups my site that we have here a zip file. Uh, reveal in the finder. If I open this up, then you can see here that we have the backup of our application. And you see here, it's maybe a little bit small, uh, the, 
the MySQL them there. So that's a that's a first successful backup. Um, what I'm going to show next, maybe maybe the cleanup. You make this a a little bit bigger. So. Um, so here you can see that grandfather uh, father son rotation scheme. So here you can just, uh, say keep all the backups for a certain amount of days, keep the daily backups, keep the weekly backups, and so on. And the last rule here is delete the oldest backups when using uh, more megabytes than. So when uh, when we run to the rotation scheme, then we are going to apply this rule. And here, for for demo purposes only, I've said that we only can uh, make backups for 30 kilobytes, and all backups above 30 kilobytes are considered unhealthy and and should be cleaned up. In a production environment, you may want to set this to a to a higher value. So, if I run uh, backup run again and do backup list. Then we're still healthy because we're still uh, below that 30 uh, kilobytes. If I run backup run now, and I do back please now, now you see that it is considered unhealthy, and there is too much uh, storage being used. Um, I've said that the package can also uh, send notifications when something goes wrong. Let me show you that first. So we have. Um, here, uh, the events, and here we have the events when an unhealthy backup is found. We're going to put something in the log. We're going to send a mail, and we're going to send a, a Slack notification. Let's do that now. So the command that will um, send out the notifications is called uh, backup monitor, and with a little bit of luck, I should have gotten. Uh, a Slack matches, and here it is. So we are using too much, too much storage. Um, let me run the cleanup. So if I run backup clean and run backup list again, then you can see we're, we're below the uh, the amount of storage that uh, uh, that was that was configured. Um, let's see. Um, those artisan commands, they can, of course, be automated by just using a Laravel scheduler. So here's a, an example of that. In this uh, demo application, the backups are being taken every night at 3 o'clock. We are going to run the cleanup at 4 o'clock, and we are going to uh, check if everything is OK and send out the notifications at, uh, at 5 o'clock. Of course, you can configure this in, a, in any, any way that you want. Um, let me demo backing up to another file system. So if I comment this out and this out, then we should see in the backup list an extra an extra row. We can see here that on S3 we have currently no backups present. That isn't uh, that isn't very healthy. So let's run backup run, and we have a uh, good internet here. It goes nice and smooth. We can see that the backup has been copied to a disk named S3 as well. So if I run backup list now, and now it's not going as smooth, but here we are. Uh, we can see that we have made a backup to, to S3. Let me show you to you that it works. So here is a little uh, backup bucket that I made. If I refresh here, then you can see that we've created our backup and that it has been uploaded to S3. Now I see that this one is unhealthy again. So if I run backup clean again and backup list, then all should be good. This application is backed up. So that is what the, the backup package can do. Back to the presentation. 
some best practices around monitoring. So I've shown to you that uh, there is a, an artisan task uh, that can send out those notifications. Now, you should be aware that your Laravel app may break or that your server may be down. And then that monitor task that, that won't run anymore. So what I advise you to do is just set up a separate server, install uh, the package in a Laravel app there, and do all the monitoring um, from there. So this is it in a, in a schema. So you have your Laravel apps at, uh, at the top row. They all back up to, like for say, S3. And there is a monitor server that just looks at, uh, at the S3 to see if all the, all the backups are there. What you can also do with the package is, is uh, back up a non-Laravel application. There are some people that don't use Laravel. And uh, what you can uh, do to back up such an application is just to install a Laravel app on the same server, just point all the configuration to the directories and the databases of that application, and then you're basically done. So let me go over the benefits again. It uh, can back up to multiple file systems. You will get notified when something goes wrong. That's really important. It will clean up older backups, and it's very easily to be installed. You don't need any uh, extra knowledge for this. And it will cost, cost you only one postcard. Now, there are also a few drawbacks I should mention. I recommend that you use this um, only for small to medium-sized apps, not for uh, like backing up uh, 100 gigabytes, because it can consume quite a bit of disk space while it's backing up. It has to create that, that zip file, so you ha have to have enough free storage on your server for this. And something that also should be mentioned is um, if you use the package, then your application has the credentials of your, of your, uh, of your backup uh, location. So when uh, a bad hacker hacks your site, he always he also has access to to the backups. It's something to be be aware of. And right now there are no restore options, and I don't think they will ever uh, get introduced because I like to do my uh, restore options by hand. If something goes wrong, sometimes it's it's just because of a file. Sometimes it's just a row in a database. Sometimes it's the whole database itself. And personally, I find it a little bit scary to to automate that uh, that process. Um, now there's uh, some uh, documentation for this package. Uh, on our documentation site, you can read everything I've said during this talk and, uh, and a whole lot more. I've got some future plans for the package. Firstly, I want to make it Laravel 5.3 compatible. Uh, if you see me behind the laptop today, I'm probably be busy doing that. Um, I've also said that we have our own notification system uh, built in that's easy to extend. We've made that because there wasn't any notification system in Laravel, but, but now there is. So I'm going to make use of that so you can use all the community drivers as well. I think there are uh, around 30 different notification drivers already. Um, in the issues on, uh, on the GitHub repository, I see that um, a lot of people want to pass extra arguments to uh, MySQL dump. Right now, that's a, that's a little bit clunky. I have to uh, create methods for every uh, argument separately, but I plan to, to use that, uh, to make that a lot more easier. And I haven't really decided on this, but I'm thinking about making the package PHP uh, 7 only, so I can make use of the, of the new syntax. If you're stuck with, uh, with PHP 5, you can still use this, this version. It's, uh, it's quite stable. So this talk in one slide. Do not uh, rely solely on the backups of your service provider, but take care of your backups as well especially when there is uh, no ops team in your organization. Um, there are many options available, both free and paid. And if you uh, want to so, uh, use something Laravel specific that you can easily be used, take a look at uh, Laravel Backup. And again, it will cost you uh, one postcard. Mm -hmm.